not only can we have compile errors, but we can also have link errors. One thing that would definitely cause a link error if there was nothing to link. If I come here and I comment out both of these attach shader calls, then when we try to link the program, linking will fail and the program is no good and we're back to our all white triangle. Not cool. We need a way to check whether linking worked or not. And it just turns out that checking for link status is near identical to checking to ensure that the compile worked. In fact, this is so dirty. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm going to copy this and I will paste it down here. And instead of saying check shader status, I'm going to say check program status. And then right here, this will be program ID. I guess I could leave it as shader ID, but I want to at least do some due diligence with copying, pasting code. Copy, paste code. I feel so dirty doing that because I know the, the uh, problems I can cause with copy and paste. When we say get shader IV, we're not getting the shader IV anymore. We're getting the program integer vector. We're getting a property on our program object, not our shader object. The property I want is not the compile status, but instead the link status. And then if compile status, ooh, let's change this to, from compile status to link status, which means I'm going to have to replace this, this, right there. What else do we have? Info log, Info log, not get shader IV anymore. Again, it's get program IV. Copy this, paste it right there. And instead of get shader info log, it's get program info log. And I think that's about it. I can't see any other things I need to change. I think we're good. Check program status. So down here I can say link the program. If not check program status program ID then return bail out of here don't use the program it's no good let's let's run this and see what we hopefully we get some error messages now very good link info no shader objects attached and then we we didn't even get to the use program part so that's feeling good now you can terminate this video here if you like but i'm actually going to take it a little bit further because this copy and paste i did here hopefully you have it turned up to high definition on YouTube. This copy and paste this function looks a lot like this one because I copied and pasted it and it felt bad to me. So I'm going to try to factor these two together, try to clean them up a little bit. What is the difference between this and this? Or more specifically in the first two, three minutes of this video, what did I have to change when I copied and pasted? Well, I changed the name of status. Uh, we have a program ID, but that's already being passed in, just like shader ID. ID. So, I, yeah, I changed some names there, but the real core stuff that's going to change how the, the code uh, differentiates from here to here is down here I'm calling get program IV, or here I'm calling get, sh get shader IV. And same thing here, and I'm also asking for the link status instead of the compile status, and I'm calling this function instead of that function. So if I can parameterize those things, then I should be able to factor these two together. So let me see if I can do that. I'm going to make yet another function. I'll zoom in here and make it a little larger. Bool. Check status. And it'll be a general check status. It could be a shader status. It could be a program ID status. Doesn't really matter. Check status. GLU int. Uh, object ID, okay, it could be a shader ID or it could be a program ID, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what other parameters do we have to pass in? Well, I need a, a function pointer that can accept, let's see, what arguments do we accept here? GLU int and GL enum and a GL int, and I could use that weird C++ syntax for function pointers, go watch my videos or look up how to do that, that's kind of crazy. Or I could do some research before I record the video <laughs> and know that the definition for that function is defined by a pfn function gl get shader iv proc. Okay, and uh, maybe it should be a get program iv proc. It doesn't really matter. If I click on this and hit F12, you'll see that this is a type def 
for a function pointer, that's what this pointer means here, it is forced precedence. The star is forced precedence to be a pointer to a function instead of something that returns a void star. The parentheses forces that precedence. And it's a pointer to a function that takes a uint, an enum, and an int. So I can just use this type def as is right here in my code. Now let's, so that makes our object getter. Uh, oh, let's do object property, property getter. And I don't like scrolling to the right, so I'm actually going to put my parameters on, each on its new line. Now, that will parameterize the IV function. We also need to parameterize the info log function. Well, guess what? I did some more research, and I found a type def that does exactly that. I'll paste it right here. And then, and then this is the get info log func. I'll, I'll suffix it with func and I'll do the same here. Then the last thing we need to parameterize is whether we're asking for the compile status or the link status. And I believe gl enum. So let's do gl, gl enum status type, like so. And then I'll put some curlies there and I'm going to copy this code for the third time. I'm going to copy this code for the third time. Paste it up in here back that up. And instead of saying compile status, let's just do general status. Copy, paste, paste. Instead of shader ID, it's going to be object ID. Object ID, object ID, object ID. Instead of compile status, it's going to be status type. So status type. And then instead of calling get shader IV, I'm going to call object property getter func. That's a pointer to a function. I'll call that, and I'll call that there. Then the get info log func, I'll go right there. This refactoring might be a little bit of hardcore, but I'm trying to show off, so why not? There we go. We have completely parameterized that get the error information code. And now I can delete all this. And I can delete all this. So I went from three copy and paste down to just one. That's nice. We factored it together. If you do any math, the term factoring, if I have 3x plus 6, we can factor out a 3, and that gives me 3x plus 2. Okay, I factored out what's in common. I want to say 3 once. I don't want to say 3 once here. And then another implied 3 in there. Same thing. I want to say my code once. So I had it here. I had it there. And I factored them both out to right there. Anyway, all that's left is to invoke the, the actual... Uh, delegated function there. So I'll say return check status. Uh, object ID will be the shader ID that comes in. Op object property getter func. That will be gl get shader IV. Uh, get info log. gl get shader info log. And status type is gl compile status. Like so, and I should have used IntelliSense. There we go. Okay, and then same thing down here. I can actually copy this and paste it right here. And instead of shader ID, it's going to be program ID. And instead of get shader IV, it's going to get gl get program IV and get program info log. And then it's going to be gl link status. Like so. I think I think we're good. Let me collapse this. I know I'm zoomed out here pretty far, and uh, let's move that to the right. Let's 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 see if this works. We should get a linker error because we didn't attach any shader objects to our program. And sure enough, we do. That's good. Let's bring these back in and make sure everything works just fine and dandy. There we go. Our nice pretty triangle. And then let's introduce our compile error again. I'm going to take this Control X and swap it with location again. I, Put that right there, and then Control F5, and sure enough, there we go. It worked for the shaders as well. Syntax error unexpected. Parentheses expecting a curly brace. Very good. So that's how we detect link errors, and then I've merged them into detecting link errors and compile errors all with the same code. Again, you don't have to do that, but yeah, I think it's kind of pro.